Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture number 13 of global business management. The, uh, we got three learning objectives today. Uh, the first learning objective of today's lecture is be familiar with the form and function of the foreign exchange market. The second one is uh, understand the difference between spot and forward exchange rates. The third one is understand how currency exchange rate are determined. Mainly today we will talk about the foreign exchange market and how international business uh, uh, is related with foreign exchange market, how it uh, foreign exchange market affects on international business. Before we start about the uh, foreign exchange, talking about foreign exchange market, first we will do the uh, quick recap of the last lecture. In the last lecture we did discuss about the benefits of, uh, we basically uh, we did talk about the regional economic integration and we did discuss about the various economic integration across the globe. The first one we discussed about the formation of Euro and we have uh, we had discussed about the various benefits of Euro. The first benefit that uh, we discussed is the it increased because of this integration it increases the saving from having uh, from having to handle one currency rather than many especially uh, for the travelers it's very convenient for the travelers to uh, to uh, have one currency to use one currency across the across the region across within the member states like in EU uh, if someone is traveling from uh, from uh, Germany to France they don't need to change the currency rather they have they can use the same currency across the across the countries in the same region and uh, overall because of this changes because of this integration it's uh, it saved a uh, huge money for the whole uh, for the for the whole region it uh, uh, it is estimated around about the 40 billion uh, us dollars in each year the next benefit of having the economic integration is it's easier to compare prices across europe this benefits is pertinent to the customer and uh, it's more easy for the firm uh, for the customers to compare the prices uh, even in the other countries on the corporate level corporate side it's more uh, it's the having the same currency gives more competition for the because a customer can see the prices customer can compare the prices across the countries and that's why the it's it, it's it's more competitive for the companies uh, to uh, in the overall environment across the market and because of this thing because of this competition as we know that the competition increases the innovation the quality of the product the uniqueness of the product these things mean the competition motivate firms to bring something new the third one is the cost of production reduced because of this economic integration of course we uh, the countries have reduced the barrier trade trade uh, tariff related and non tariff related uh, trade barriers and because of this thing uh, the overall cost of uh, transportation and other things they have been reduced the next one is that gives a strong boost to the development of highly liquid pan European capital market like Nasdaq uh, the third one is it provides firms provide the overall region provides to the countries to uh, establish a liquid highly liquid a market like just like the Nasdaq in the USA the last one is it provides opportunities for the companies and the for the individual people to invest across the countries in the other markets even for the individual it's easy to raise the, to invest somewhere else in some other market because of the no, uh, no financial limitation no restrictions and it's easier for the companies as well it's easier for the companies to raise the money from the other market uh, and uh, invest or uh, float across list somewhere else it's more easier for them okay but the negative thing with the euro uh, of this overall uh, economic integration is because it's uh, because of this thing in, in the countries within the uh, within this block they lose control over uh, their monetary policy because they have to align their policies with the uh, policies of the whole region EU is not the optimal currency area. This is the second point. The critics, uh, the uh, critics, they raise this point. That's they are saying that these countries within the EU they have the different wage system, they have the different tax system, they have the different business cycle and effects of shock. 
economic level and the growth level, the GDP level, that's a different as a huge variation across the member countries. And that's why having a single currency across these countries is not, it's not the good solution. Uh, it's not the good way to unite them. Why they are saying this thing that uh, because of these reasons, uh, the wage is different and tax system. Like for instance, it happened because of the financial crisis. Some countries, they affected more severely because of this financial crisis and the effect of that crisis uh, on these countries flowed, flowed from that country to the other countries which were stable during the financial crisis. I mean, though even because of this integration and because of this unity, countries who, uh, who, go, who had the strong financial system, who are the strong economy, even they got in affected because of this financial trouble because of other weaker countries. The next one is the shifting the economic effects to another country like we discussed. Potential in, uh, political influence like a fortress Europe. Political influence mean some countries who are more politically more stronger like Germany and France, they influence the weaker countries like weaker countries within the EU like uh, Greece, uh, like um, Greece, uh, we can say the Spain, Portugal, they are more or less uh, politically influenced countries and the bigger countries, um, they can influence on them. The last one is the fortress. All the economic integration, integrated areas, they can behave like a fort fortress. Like uh, fortress mean like they will encourage their own firms to do the business within the that uh, integration that the integrated uh, unit within that uh, domain like in EU they will encourage their firms to do the business within the EU but they will prohibit firms to come in the EU that's important thing and they are behaving just like uh, like we have here in, um, in we know that about the killer people who are living inside the fortress they are protected and people who are outside they are discouraged they are not allowed to enter in, in it and that's very uh, very scrutiny when they uh, il, uh, when they are entering within the that boundary wall okay the next uh, economic integrated area that we had uh, or in economic uh, uh, agreement or treaty that we had discussed in the last lecture was the North American free trade area which includes the United States, Canada and Mexico. It was uh, the intentions of this uh, trade area was to abolish the tariffs on 99 percent of the goods traded between the member countries, removed barrier on the cross-border flow of services. This, that was the second uh, objective. The third one is it protects intellectual right, pro property rights. Uh, the next one is remove most restriction on the between the member countries, allow each uh, country to apply its own environmental standards. And it, they, it was established between two commissions to impose fines and remove trade privileges when environmental standards are legislation involving the, involving the health and safety and minimum wage child labor are ignored benefit for all countries this is the important thing important thing with this one is the most uh, important element when they were uh, trying to make this nafta agreement was that because uh, uh, from the each country have their own uh, perspective to see this thing how they are going to get benefited from this integration for, for instance from the usa and canada side they were thinking about uh, they are going to get benefit of the cheap labor uh, from the Mexico and the cheap resources within the Mexico and they were intent to move their production facilities from the USA and Canada to Mexico so that they can av avail the benefit of the cheap labor and, and uh, cheap raw materials. When we see from the perspective of the Mexico, Mexico of course they were, they were thinking at that time and they, they, they got this, this benefit, the, the capital inflow this is a huge benefit. A lot of countries, a lot of multinational companies enter off from the USA and Canada because of this uh, this integration and you know, removing of trade, trade barriers. A lot of those multinational companies entered in the Mexico and they created jobs, they created uh, the facility, they created the technology, uh, they, they transferred um, uh, the more efficient uh, management skills, strategies, marketing, financial, these strategies, they have, uh, they have introduced a new set of uh, strategies, most efficient strategy within the Mexico because of the uh, this spillover and resource transfer effects. 
But uh, important thing, the one con uh, uh, concern from the USA and ca Canada was that because their uh, uh, rule of law is weak, poor corporate governance, and there is less institutional stability is low. Because of these things, there is a possibility that the companies which call, which have the competitive advantage of information technology, better companies who are better technology uh, technologically, they are more equipped. They, there was a possibility that when they go to the Mexico, because they don't have the intellectual property rights, very they are very weak, and there is a chances that they will they're going to lose or they're going to steal this thing. That's why they they put this limitation, this criteria. Uh, in within the agreement, and the second thing, what they were believing at that, and the go at the government level, that the because of this child labor and the minimum wage standards and this and the on this and that, and they were not more uh, the Mexicans, they are not concerned because being a developing country, they are not concerned about the environmental issues, uh, and American U.S. government, America and the Canadian government were concerned that when uh, these uh, our companies are going will go there. The Mexican government should take care of these things; otherwise, it will be a violation of this treaty. And they, they, they were all these countries were agreed that the, if the local companies in Mexico they were not following the minimum standards of um, uh, the wage, the child labor things, or environmental things, or uh, f the safety measures of working conditions, this and this sort of things, they will be penalized. Uh, by uh, fines and um, some other penalties. Okay, there are some other um, formation within the South American market, like the Andean Pact, formed between uh, formed in 1969 between the uh, Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru. It's the main uh, intention was similar, like they have seen in EU. And uh, beside this agreement uh, in South America, they had the Mercosur. Mercosur was a trade agreement between the uh, between Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina and Ven Venezuela. These were the five countries which were involved in Mac Mercosur. Trade talks in uh, another th was that uh, in free trade of the Americas, uh, which was uh, mainly uh, uh, established between the USA and Brazil, but the both countries have their own concerns. Uh, USA have their concern for the, uh, again, the same concerns, the intellectual property right and this and that. And the, but the bra Brazil, they have the more concern that the US has, uh, US has to stop giving the subsidies and privilege to the, and they have to stop protecting their agriculture uh, uh, Farmers, they these agri the the people or companies who are producing the ag agriculture related industries, they have to stop protecting those because otherwise, if they are giving subsidies and benefits to the local, uh, if the American uh, government were giving subsidies to the agriculture related industry, then how it's possible that the Mex uh, the Brazilian companies uh, who are operating in the USA in agriculture f industry they can compete with the Americans? It's, it was not possible. Okay, the next, uh, that was the main concerns uh, from the Brazilian side. The Association of the South Asian Nations, uh, this, is, uh, e this is the one integration in the Asia, uh, which includes the Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Myan uh, Myanmar, and Laos, and Cambodia. These are the countries who are uh, included in a a ASEAN. And... Uh, uh, and the next one was the uh, ASEAN Free Trade Area (AFTA). Between the six original members of the ASEAN came into effect in 2003. ASEAN and AFTA are moving towards establishing a free trade zone. They are uh, doing some efforts to integrate their um, their region. We have seen some some agreement, some integration in Africa as well. And the most important one is the East African Community. EAC, which was launched in 2001. Now, what is the uh, uh, what is the foreign exchange market? Imp uh, why, what is the foreign exchange market, and why it is important for international business? These are the two things we are going to uh, discuss today, and uh, this is the main important question of today's economy, because we we are going to see how uh, we are uh, our international business interact with uh, 
foreign exchange market. The first one is the you, you, like we, we can say, you are probably familiar with some of the major currencies uh, within the world, like a U.S. dollar, the euro, euro, and the pound, and the Japanese yen. But you, uh, but do you, but do know how much each currency is worth in terms of your own currency? Of course, you know about these things. They, like the, uh, we we are more uh, familiar in Pakistan about the dollar. Current rate is around uh, one one. Um, uh, one dollar is equal to the one one zero one one hundred one rupees, uh, and the pound is around about one sixty two, and the euro uh, euro is uh, one twenty nine equal mean one twenty nine rupees equal to one uh, one euro. And uh, we first we start with the basic definition. The foreign exchange market is simply a market for converting the currency of one current one country into that of another country and an exchange rate is the rate at which one currency is converted into another this is the basic definition we are all aware of this sort of definition that what is the meaning of foreign exchange market exchange market uh, imagine a scenario that uh, where we don't have the exchange market what going to happen like um, each country each country have its own currency and they don't have the exchange market how they are going to trade with each other then they will they, the countries have to go to the barter trade system and otherwise it's not possible to convert if uh, convert if the conversion of one currency into another is not uh, possible then uh, then the only way which is left to do the trade across the country is the barter trade and the what's the exchange rate exchange rate is the rate at which one currency is converted into the another what's the purpose of foreign exchange market this is the main important question we are going to see and this is the first learning objective of today's lecture the foreign exchange market is used to convert the currency of one country into the currency of another country this is the basic the first purpose the next purpose is provide some insurance against foreign exchange risk the adverse consequences of unpredicted changes in exchange rate this is the second purchase uh, purpose of uh, of this foreign exchange market to protect the business to ensure a business from foreign exchange risk what is the meaning of foreign exchange risk foreign exchange risk we can consider like this that uh, we don't know about the conversion rate in the future like um, just take this scenario that um, a company which is operating in in Pakistan, Pakistani company, uh, that company intends to buy some products from USA, and there was they were the USA and Pakistani firm were agreed that Pakistani firm is going to pay back this money when they are going to sell it. Yeah, or we can say that after one month they are going to pay back the money of that products. What, what is going to happen? I mean, the time they bought they bought the products was the start of start of, for instance, uh, May. They brought uh, they they bought these products at a certain rate, for instance, one hundred one. And uh, what you say about end of the month when they have to pay back this money? What uh, what will be the exchange rate of uh, between the Pakistani rupees and U.S. dollars? I mean, companies they they don't know that. What if if the exchange rate is uh, increased from uh, one I mean Pakistani rupee uh, uh, discounts or depreciated if uh, uh, in a way like uh, one dollar will get equal to one or five rupees? What going to happen for that company? That will be a huge loss for that for, for the Pakistani company, and this is considered as a foreign exchange risk. And how companies handle this sort of risk, how they manage this risk, this is we are going to discuss today. What are the different ways to manage this sort of risk? And the foreign exchange market is the only place uh, which uh, cater this uh, and handle this sort of problems. Foreign exchange rate is the rate at which one currency is converted into another. We know that. Events in the foreign exchange rate affects firm sale,
profits and strategy like we discussed the example of this company if uh, just imagine that come the price of that uh, US dollars is uh, uh, appreciated then uh, what gonna happen the sale of Pakistani overall net profit of Pakistani company will go down and the strategies they have in order to control and harder to tackle this problem they have to make some other strategies might be they are going to stop buying the product from abroad or they are going to fix some rate or they are going to pay in advance or some 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 other strategy they have to do say have to adopt they have to find out some other strategy to take care to handle this problem okay when do firms use the foreign exchange market this is another important question not each and every firm is involved with the foreign exchange market okay international companies international companies multinational companies use the foreign exchange market when there are four four scenarios where they use uh, foreign exchange market the first one is when they receive for uh, the payment when they they have uh, export uh, exported some stuff to another country like pakistani firm exported some stuff to usa and they are going to receive the payment of that export the net uh, the income they receive from foreign investments or foreign exports or the income they receive from licensing agreements from with foreign firms or in foreign currencies like for, for instance if for pakistani firms who are exporting to usa who are doing fdi in in usa or if they are doing some licensing in F, in licensing agreement in foreign firms or these are these things are like like there is one um, famous thing is um, uh, like um, for instance um, we have the tahzeeb bakers here um, and uh, what if they w they intend to open one bakery uh, they are not if they are not intend to do it by them themselves if they do the franchise thing and some people who are living in in London in Pakistani community, they in, they are willing to open and they are willing to uh, buy this franchise and open the one franchise in in UK. And uh, what gonna happen? And how that firm in, in uh, operating in Tazib in London, how they are going to pay back this amount because they are dealing with the pound. They are doing their everything is in pound. How they are going to pay back? to the Pakistani this Lahore or Islamabad from wherever they have the headquarter that's if they have headquarter in Islamabad how they are going to pay back that money from London to Islamabad of course they, there will be a different currency ex, uh, involved and they have to deal with the foreign exchange market because now they have to deal with the pound from pound to they have to receive the pound pound to Pakistani rupees they must pay a foreign currency for its products or services in its country's currency. I mean, if Pakistani firm is buying some products from USA, some spare parts or something, of course they have to pay the amount in dollars, in US dollars. In that, in that way, they have to convert their Pakistani rupees into US dollars. This is the second way, second scenario where foreign exchange market is involved in international business they have the third scenario is they have spare cash that they wish to invest for short term in money market for instance if interest rate are high in foreign location than at home for instance just in take a scenario that uh, uh, there is a fund firm who a Pakistani firm who got the extra money and and the interest rate if that they if they invest in in some Pakistan mean if they want to put that money for a shorter period of time in in some bank or somewhere uh, in some investment short term investment if they are getting like 10 percent and uh, another scenario is alternative option they have that if they buy currency somewhere else uh, so in some other currency or if they want to invest in for a shorter period of time for the same shorter period of time if they invest in London and they are getting 12 percent in that way they have to convert the currency and the foreign exchange market will be involved okay I mean because of the 
better growth, better opportunity, better investment opportunity, which will give better uh, profit. Okay, the, f the fourth and last scenario where foreign exchange involved in international business is, is the currency speculation. Currency speculation is the short term movement of firms, uh, movement of funds from one currency to another in the hope of profiting from shift in exchange rate. Currency speculation is like uh, we take the example is of like the we speculate this thing. Speculate means make a guess, make a guess, uh, predict something. Like uh, you, uh, for instance, if we have some money in our pocket and we want, we we think that in near future uh, exchange rate of that con uh, exchange rate of Pakistani rupees and U.S. dollar is going to be change. Like uh, for instance. Uh, you are thinking that uh, US dollar is going g going up like uh, another example like this that uh, there is uh, some uh, agreement nowadays we have we, we are seeing uh, between uh, China's agreement uh, all over the world and we recently we have seen in Pakistan as well in in in, in India as well and we have before this uh, he visited the Chinese president he visited to uh, USA as well what if Chinese before before uh, the visit of the Chinese president to USA, uh, we he visited like in for instance if he visited in January, uh, and uh, in the start of the January, uh, we buy we are just uh, we are speculating this thing. The dealers these people these dealers they used to speculate of currency movement. And they are, they are just uh, having a close eyes, close watch on this sort of uh, economic movement, uh, economic activities around the globe or in, the current, in those uh, countries. Like uh, if they see that the, uh, this Chinese president is going to USA for big investments in end of the January, they're going to buy the US dollar in Pakistan and uh, in the start of the January. And when they see this, the dollar goes, uh, is is up after that visit they're going to immediately sell that amount and they're going to make the money that's how this this I mean short term buying and selling short term buy they bought some currency other another currency and then they're going to sell that currency okay we take explicitly we take the example like this a company has a 1 million to invest in 3 months this is a scenario a company has 1 million US dollars to invest in in three months, it suspe it's suspect that the U.S. dollar is overvalued against Pakistani rupees. Now we are considering. Uh, just keep in mind, we are considering that a company has U.S. dollars, one million U.S. dollars, not the Pakistani rupees, and they are thinking that the U.S. dollar is uh, nowadays it's overvalued against Pakistani rupees. It expect that value of a dollar to depreciate against that of Pakistani rupee. Considering this, uh, these these uh, companies thinking that this U.S. dollar is overvalued uh, against the Pakistani rupees. This is the basic scenario, and they are thinking uh, in uh, after few uh, after few months within the three months, the dollar will go down against the Pakistani rupees. I mean, dollar will depreciate against the Pakistani rupee. Imagine the current, uh, current, current exchange rate is, for instance, one dollar is equal to 100 rupees. The company exchanges its one million dollar into Pakistani rupees receiving 100 million. Okay. A crore ban gaya. Das crore ban gaya. Ab kya hua ke uh, receiving 100, das crore ban gaya. Over the next three months, the value of a dollar depreciate. Ab, ab, ab now what happened? One dollar is equal to the 95 rupees. I mean, dollar went down. Now the company, uh, our company ke paas kya hai? 10 crore Pakistani rupees hai. Ab now what that company is going to do? Now the company exchanges its 100 million U Pakistani rupees back to dollar and get 1.05 million US dollars. I mean, in a 50,000 US dollar ka fayda ho gaya hai. Any pehle hona na, but they did, they had the million, uh, they had the 1 million US dollars and they are thinking that the, this this rate between Pakistani rupees and the US dollar is overvalued and the US dollar will go down in the near future. What they, what they did, 
they bought and the exchange rate was one dollar one dollar is equal to 100 rupees and what they did they bought all these dollars to uh, they bought Pakistani rupees from these dollars and there they, they bought uh, 100 million when they observed that the, uh, the dollar is down they bought again they bought, bought again the dollar and the difference between the, what they had before was 1 million and now they have 1.05 million the company made the 50,000 uh, 50,000 US dollars profit on currency speculation in three months this is called currency speculation and this is the third uh, fourth element how uh, company uh, companies engage in foreign exchange market okay the, f the in in the first slide we have uh, learned this thing that, that there are some risks involved in foreign exchange market and uh, with ex risk involved in foreign exchange because we cannot predict and we don't know about exactly uh, what will be the exchange rate after a few days after even tomorrow we cannot predict this thing and what gonna happen what happen how these companies uh, do the business and despite they have this sort of risk and this sort of uncertainties in the environment they do for uh, they do the foreign they have some sort of strategy they do which is called hedging we we are going to uh, going to have a look on this thing first first the foreign exchange market provides insurance to uh, protect against free foreign exchange risk like we had discussed the possibility that the unpredicted changes in future exchange rate will have adverse consequences of the firm adverse consequences mean a loss of uh, profit and change of strategy which will incur them more cost and this and that but important thing firm that insures itself against foreign exchange risk is called hedging to insure or hedge hedge mean chupna um, ya something like this me aa raha hota to insure or hedge against a possible adverse foreign exchange rate movement from engage in foreign exchange forward exchanges two parties agree to exchange currency and execute the deal at some specific date in the future using a forward exchange rate mean what what does it mean mean we had discussed the problem we had discussed that there is a problem of risk because we don't know about what go, what will be the rate uh, in in future tomorrow uh, after a few weeks and after a few months what will rate we are not the companies the international business the managers we are they are not sure about this thing what they do to protect against this uncertainty against this risk they do hedging what's the meaning of hedge in hedge basically what they do they fix or they use forward exchange rate forward ex they use the they predict something like like we had discussed this thing that uh, in the beginning the example if we continue with the same example Pakistani company operating in Pakistan bought something uh, from the USA in start of May and they want to pay, pay them back that money uh, by end of May but the time they bought in the start of May the rate was uh, one dollar is equal to US dollar is equal to the one zero one rupee one hundred one rupees and at this price they uh, when they when they got the stuff got that products and when they have to pay back might be what if that rate becomes one one zero five then of course for each each dollar they are spending four extra rupees and this is a big uh, big it can be a big money for the company uh, if for instance if they bought the uh, 100,000 US dollars the cost of that thing is 100 100 uh, thousand US dollars and that will be a um, I mean big money that will be a 400,000 uh, or because of the char big difference say that the difference of the company what will the cost be the for the company is char lag char lag ko nuksan ho gaya that will be the and but they can because they don't know about the future future exchange rate what they can do for that thing they can use a hedge in hedging what they will do with the mutual consensus with that company Pakistani and US company they're going to decide they're going to fix some forward exchange rate with the prediction both have their own uh, foreign exchange can they, they can consult with the foreign exchange uh, dealers and they are going to decide about okay uh, okay there is a possibility that uh, dollar will go up 
there is a possibility dollar will go down both there is a possibility for both sides what they're going to do they're going to think about oh, and it's not possible it can stay the same but they are going to the, the dealers will tell you that what is the most likely uh, possibility that might be uh, dollar, there is a more uh, chances that dollar will go up and to what extent they're going to predict this thing and they're going to fix some rate like they bought the in the start of may by end of may they can fix this thing okay today is the rate is uh, 101 and uh, in end of may we can uh, i can pay you back the pakistani companies say because of these consultant mutual consensus they can say we can pay you back with uh, 102 rupees or we can pay, pay you 103 rupees but even then they are paying something extra but they are uh, they are they, they uh, for instance if they are paying uh, with uh, 102 rupees even then uh, it costs them 1 lakh extra hua lekin tab bhi dusre scenario mein dekhiye agar imagine karenge 105 ho jata what be what will be the loss of for that company in that case the loss was uh, 5 lakh tha loss so pe liye ab 105 pe bhejna 105 pe wapsi karni pad gayi hai us waqt 100 tha baad mein 105 ho gaya ठीक है पांच पांच रुपए पर डॉलर और और लाख डॉलर थे तो पांच लाख का नुकसान हुआ और उस केस में इफ दे आर यूजिंग फॉरवर्ड एक्सचेंजेस दे फिक्स सम फॉरवर्ड एक्सचेंज दे फिक्स सम रेट और फिर क्या हुआ 102 पे फॉर इंस्टेंस कर दिया तब कितना हुआ नुकसान 2 लाख का हुआ यानी कि एटलीस्ट दे हेज दे ट्राई टू अवॉइड दैट अनसर्टेनिटी दे दे डिड इट वी कैन ओके देयर इज बिफोर वी टॉक बिफोर वी it, uh, we will discuss about the explicit examples how it work and before we do that we will uh, we have to distinguish between the two terms one is a spot, a spot exchange, exchange rate and the second one is a forward exchange rate what is the meaning of spot exchange rate uh, spot exchange rate is the rate at which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency into another currency on a particular day for instance right now what is whatever the rate is going on between Pakistani rupees and dollar that will be the at uh, for instance at four o'clock for uh, I mean 1600 hours at on um, today 1600 hours the rate is the, the rate will be this thing that will be the considered as the spot exchange rate spot exchange rate continually depending on the supply and demand for that currency and other currencies this is the important thing that is changing every minute this this rate is changing co continuously and how it's changing and what determines this this rate this rate determined by the supply and demand of these currency in both countries okay the next thing is a forward exchange rate that we had is a rate used for hedging like we discussed in the forward market in the forward market forward in the future market Rates for currency exchange are typically quoted for 30, 90, and 180 days into the future. Spot exchange rate is the current rate. Future, uh, forward exchange rate is the future rate. And we know they define these rates in 30 days period, 90 days period, and 180 days period in the future. Okay. If you know you are going to need 200,000 yen in 30 days to pay for some components, uh, your company imports rather than taking a chance that the rate might change over the 30 days you might into uh, might enter into a forward agreement to buy the yen now and lock in the rate and pay for them in 30 days when you need them forward rates are quoted 30 90 180 days into the future I mean rather than you have to wait uh, wait that when this currency is going to be change or when this uh, uh, when um, you are going to see and take a risk that might be this this rate can come down but there is a possibility that this rate can come up and you will be in big trouble you will lose a lot and so what they do you might enter into a forward agreement this is called forward agreement to buy the yen now and lock the rate and you have to fix that rate for after 30 period 30 days in contrast a spot exchange rate is a rate at which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency foreign exchange dealer converts one currency into another currency on a particular day so when you are on a trip to germany and you change dollars for euro you will get the spot rate for the when you are traveling away from for instance from here to saudi 
and uh, you are traveling tomorrow, whatever the dealer is going to give you against that uh, Saudi real, uh, uh, so you are going to get the Saudi real against the Pakistani rupees, that for instance the, you get the thir uh, 29 rupees uh, um, against one Saudi real, that, and that rate is the spot exchange rate. And spot rates can be quoted either in terms of how much foreign currency the, uh, the, the dollar will buy. So using the chart in your text, you would know that one dollar would buy about uh, um, uh, 79, 0 0.79 uh, euro in February 2009. A spot rate can be quoted in terms of how many dollars you get for one unit of foreign currency. How many dollars you, uh, or so one euro would be bought. 1.26 meaning both ways mein hota hai. like is ka kehne ka, uh, the exact meaning of this thing is uh, you can say this thing uh, one dollar is equal to uh, 101 rupees or 101 rupees is equal to uh, one dollar or yeah is ko oppositely uh, karke dekh lein to aapko divide well, you have to divide between the uh, like uh, one dollar 1 divided by 101 karke dekh lenge. Yeah, th that will be the answer that in both ways you can, you can talk about. Keep in mind that the spot rates are continually changing based on supply and demand of the currency. Okay, now let's talk about the forward exchange rate. You sell a currency at, okay, there though in, in, in exchange, in when we talk about the forward exchange rate, there are two possibilities. Either in the future it, uh, in it goes up or goes down these are two possibilities okay you sell a currency at a discount when dollar is selling at a discount on the 30 day forward market it is worth more on a spot market yani mean if uh, uh, whatever we are doing now by end of may the day the price of dollar will go down this is called it is worth the do, worth of dollar is more on the spot trades in the spot market worth of dollar is more in the spot market mean today then 30 day forward market then as compared to what we are going to get after 30 days 30 day market forward market okay on 15 5 2005 2015 you have one dollar and you can buy rs102 uh, rupees from it but on 1506 2015 15th of june you can buy 98 rupees from it this is called discount you sell a currency in a forward exchange in the forward market you sell a currency at discount the next thing is premium you can sell a currency at a premium what does it mean premium mean dollar is selling at a premium on the 30 day forward market mean that on 15th of May you have one dollar and you can buy RS like RS um, from it but on 15th of June 2015 after 30 days you can buy from it from the US from, from the one US dollar that mean US dollar is you are selling a US dollar at a premium. This is a, I mean, this is a technical term that you use. Uh, important thing we know about, you can go up or down, but important in technically, when they talk about the dealers, they talk, they talk about, they talk in these terms, forward exchange market, spot rate, and they, it's, uh, you sell at discount or you sell at premium. These are the technical terms we, we should be, we should know these terms. Another thing that uh, in the foreign currency, uh, in, in the foreign exchange market, the companies do is the swap, currency swap. What is the meaning of currency swap? Currency swap is a simultaneous purchase and sale of a given amount of exchange for two different value dates. Swaps are trans, uh, transacted between international business and their banks, between banks between governments when it is desirable to move out of one currency into into another for a limited period without incurring foreign exchange rate risk mean swap can be possible between between these entities between the first one is the international business and banks swap can be possible between banks 
and swap can be possible between governments when it is desirable to move out of one currency into another for a limited period without incurring foreign exchange rate risk. Okay, a currency swap is the exchange of a liability in one currency for a liability in another currency. Again, I repeat, a currency swap is the exchange of liability in one currency for a liability in another currency. This is, bas this is the basic definition of currency swap. For instance, U.S. corporation with operation in France can obtain comparatively better terms by borrowing dollars but prefer a loan in euro. French corporation with operation in U.S. can obtain comparative better terms by borrowing euros but prefer a loan in dollars. The two companies could go and go to a swap bank who could arrange for a loan swap. Okay. Imagine this, this example is talking like this, a uh, U.S. company, this is, uh, of course, we are talking about the international companies, we are talking, there is a one U.S. company who has some function in, who operations in France. They need money in France, I mean in euros, they need money because they need some expansion or some, uh, some, some, uh, uh, requirement some uh, capital requirement in France France operation but what is the problem problem is they can they can get that loan from either from France or either they can get loan from uh, from USA because this is the headquarters in USA and what, what is the uh, and the thing is considering uh, that firm have a headquarter in USA they can get uh, more better uh, they can loan they can get a loan uh, on better terms and condition as compared to if they go and get a loan from France why this is called the basic term is considered as information asymmetry information asymmetry between the between the lender and the creditor information asymmetry is the I mean the difference of information between these two people between the bank and the company um, it's, it's, uh, it's happened in the uh, credit market like uh, because why its information asymmetry is uh, d determines the credit rate uh, loan rate why it's like this because the bank needs some security and banks need some uh, some surety that the company is going to pay back that money and how they get that kind of the first way of course they are going to ask for the collateral but the important thing what they are going to do the evaluate the company's information evaluate the company's information and they uh, they make a decision on their int intuitive skills on their an analytical skills and these are the, the skills they are going to use when they are going to decide about the lend, uh, lending decision important thing is because they have the headquarters there, they have the history, they have the uh, previous uh, uh, some uh, some good operation, successful operation, might be the uh, credit history, the relationship with the lender. These are the things that will determine and that will establish the rate there on which they are going to get the money from the USA. Now the trouble is when if they are going to go the same same amount from the from the France, the trouble is because they don't have they have more higher information asymmetry in France because might be that operation is new in France and might be there is a possibility that uh, they don't have that big long credit history the good relationship uh, with the, because they are foreigner there in France and so the rate of borrowing the rate of loan is higher in France as compared to USA same goes for the French firm who is operating in USA okay both firms we know that USA firm who is operating in France needs euros to invest in France French firm who is operating in USA needs dollars to expand their business in, in USA what they can do they can both firms can go to the swap bank and they could make a swap deal how they are going to do the deal US firm is going to borrow money because they can raise money cheaply in USA okay they can borrow money in dollar from USA French company they can borrow money in France because they can raise money cheaply in France in euro but okay but they need dollar and US company need euro 
and what they what they're gonna do they can swap they can raise their money cheaper rate from each country from their home home country from their home bank and they're gonna go to the that bank and they uh, that swap bank is going to swap their loans I mean uh, the US company is going to get the euros from 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 the French company and the French company is going to get the dollar at from the US company and what is the benefit against this thing with the, with this deal I mean of course the rate of rate of borrowing is cheaper for the French firm a French firm in France the US firm in USA and they can swap this the loans with each other and they both of them are going to get benefit because of low rate of interest okay there is one example uh, like we discussed this is exactly the same example here an American multinational company company a may wish to expand its operation in Brazil simultaneously a Brazilian company company B is seeking entrance into the US market financial problems that company A will typically face will face uh, stem from Brazilian banks unwilling to extend loans to international corporation because again because of the information asymmetry therefore in order to take out a loan in Brazil company A might be subject to a higher interest rate of 10 percent likewise company B which is a Brazilian company will not be able to attain a loan with a favorable interest rate in the US market the Brazilian company may only be able to obtain credit at 9% now we know that the same we are talking about the same example that we discussed in the US and French firm I mean uh, in order to take loan in the company A can uh, subject of high interest rate of 10% in uh, if, if the US company if the US company is going to get the loan from Brazil they are going to get uh, the loan at 10% rate a Brazilian company if uh, that company is going to get the loan from USA they are going to pay 9% okay this is the one possibility the company A could hypothetically take out a loan from American bank at a lower rate uh, of course because of uh, reduced information symmetry uh, at 4% rate and company B can borrow from its local institutions at 5% they both go back to their home countries and the banks from the home country and can they can get the loan from there and the loans are then swapped with each other that's how they in in this example you can you as you can see that how much uh, money a company A and B saved if we if we see this thing that company A could get the loan at 10 percent but they go uh, they went their home country and they borrowed at the uh, uh, 4 percent but they swap with the with the Brazilian company of with the five percent they save five percent there and for the company B they could borrow at nine percent but they swap with the four percent of with the with the US firm they save the five percent as well the benefit for both companies is five percent the loans are then okay what is the nature of the foreign exchange market the foreign exchange market is a global network of banker, banks, brokers, foreign exchange dealers connected by electronic communication systems. The most important trade, I mean, the important thing is the, the, who, who are these people, foreign exchange market, uh, what is, compo is uh, composed of. This is, these are the banks, brokers, foreign exchange dealers, and they, how they are operating, they are operating with uh, the computers and electronic communication uh, systems. The most important trading centers are London, New York, Tokyo, and Singapore. These are the most important foreign exchange market. And uh, among these markets, it's, it's uh, uh, unanimously, uh, mean, uh, mean it's uh, people or dealers, these markets believe this thing. The most important one is the London market because of its location. Uh, on eastern side, they, have, they are catering the, all the area of Asia uh, except I mean till uh, on, on the eastern side towards uh, between uh, the uh, Singapore and Tokyo is comes on the eastern side of the London the, uh, the London stock market catches all that area and on the western side they have only the New York 
and New York is also located on the eastern side of the USA so mean London London is located in in the central uh, uh, central position of the globe in the financial exchange market the market is always open somewhere in the world but they again we have it uh, they the uh, the critics say that the might be London have uh, lost this significance in the stock market uh, in in the foreign exchange market because they didn't join the euro market this this is sort of a debatable thing the market is always open somewhere in the world it never sleeps this is the important thing currencies are always being traded somewhere in the world I mean uh, if we see that um, um, London, first of all from the eastern side we see the Tokyo um, the place where this um, it's uh, uh, they uh, they get trading start trading there when they stop trading and imagine at the five o'clock they stop uh, stop trading and five o'clock they, they uh, at might be the difference between time scale uh, between the London and uh, London and the Tokyo is seven hours and at that at that time of course it's afternoon in in London when London the time finish in London of course they are doing trading in the New York when New York they were in they stop trading in New York and gets five six o'clock and of course they are again the Japanese markets are awake in that way they say that uh, it never sleeps the foreign exchange market never sleeps it's everywhere so every time every time somewhere currencies are being traded somewhere in the world do exchange rate differ uh, between markets high speed compu computer linkage just between trading center mean there is no significant difference between uh, exchange rates in uh, different trading centers mean trade rate should be same across the world if the exchange rate quoted in different markets are not essentially the same there would be an opportunity for arbitrage the process of buying a currency low and selling it high is called arbitrage in but it again depends on if the rate is not similar most transaction involved uh, involved dollars on one side it is a vehicle currency along with the euro Japanese yen and the British pound I mean important thing the uh, next point is uh, dollar is considered as a vehicle currency I mean everyone is willing to do the transaction or convert into the euro it's not possible that if you go somewhere and they say we don't take dollars but in other currency if you for instance if someone is living in Sweden and they he wants to convert the uh, currency of uh, Chinese or if they want to convert uh, the uh, Swedish or uh, Swiss franc what they're going to do first they are going to do change the Swedish Corona into dollar then dollar will be converted into Swiss franc that will be I mean this is that's why they, they call it the dollar is considered as the vehicle currency and it's written here that the 87 percent of all transactions are done in dollars okay now we talk about the arbitrage buying and selling uh, immediate buying and selling and making a profit between this from buying and selling the difference between between across the market difference of quotation uh, across the market for instance if the dollar versus Pakistani rupees exchange rate quoted in London at 3 p.m. is 1 rupees is equal to 95 95 Pakistani rupees again 3 p.m. London same time uh, New York mein kya time hoga wa hoga jo bhi paam bhi evening mein hoga um, wo it is a time of it is it will be worth it one dollar is equal to 100 rupees mean they are not quoted similarly it should be same because they are not quoted similarly now we there will be arbitrage who is going to make arbitrage the dealers immediately they get money and then they make the arbitrage a dealer could make a profit through arbitrage if such prices differ then dealer could purchase um, RS uh, 100 million for uh, 100,000 US dollars in New York and immediately sell them in London for 105,000 
105 US dollar, 105,000 US dollars, and make a quick profit of 10,000 US dollars. Imagine all the dealers want to avail this ever, um, investment opportunity and buy US, buy rupees from from New York, which result in appreciation of RS um, of rupees in against dollar in New York. I mean, if I mean, when they see this thing that the dollar rate of Pakistani rupees is higher in New York, everybody wants to go and get the uh, Pakistani rupees, and they want to sell it in London because the London the rupee uh, the rate is lower. What are they going to do? What is going to happen the, in New York? The demand of Pakistani rupee will be increased, and demand will be increased, so rate will be increased as well. And in London, everybody is going to sell. Is everybody is selling the Pakistani rupee? What's going to happen? There will be a more supply, and demand will be low, and the rate will be go down. While increase in supply in RS in London would result in their depreciation rate, the discrepancy, discrepancy between the London and New York would disappear very quickly. Mean they are saying that because of the investment opportunity, because of the investment, everybody is going to buy. पाकिस्तान रुपया हर कोई ले रहा खरीद रहा होगा न्यूयॉर्क में तो क्या होगा इसकी डिमांड ज़्यादा हुई हुई है डिमांड से क्या होगा चीज़ की कीमत ऊपर चढ़ जाएगी ठीक है और आ, उसकी लंदन के अंदर नीचे हो रही होगी बहुत ज़्यादा सप्लाई है उसकी प्राइस नीचे आ जाएगी दोनों ऑटोमेटिकली इस पर बराबर आ जाएंगे जो डिफ्रेंस जो है ये दैट विल डिसपियर सो इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दिस से इट कैन टेक्स ओनली फ्यू मिनट्स टू डिसपियर द आर बी ट्रे दिस दिस डिफ्रेंस In between this moment, between this time, the people take that, make the transaction, and they get the, and they get benefit with the, these buying and selling, con immediate buying and selling, and this is called arbitrage. Okay, now we do the quick summary of the today's uh, lecture. The foreign, uh, we did discuss about the what is the meaning of foreign exchange, why we use it, the, uh, the use to convert the currency of one currency into a country. Into into another, they provide some insurance against foreign exchange risk. The exchange is a rate at which one currency can be to another. International companies use um, foreign exchange market for several four purposes. And the foreign exchange market provide insurance to protect against foreign exchange risk, and the possibility that unpredicted changes in future exchange rate will have ad adverse consequences for the firm. A firm that insure itself against foreign exchange rate is called hedging to ensure a hedge against the possible adverse foreign exchange rate movement funds engage in foreign exchange two part two parties agree to exchange currency and ex execute a deal at some specific rate in the future using a foreign exchange rate this is called foreign exchange rate the next one is the spot exchange rate spot which they do at the moment and the foreign exchange rate is the Uh, is done in at the time of 30 30 days 90 days or 180 days in the future okay another thing that we have discussed is the currency swap they do that uh, is the simultaneous purchase and sale of the given amount of foreign exchange for two different value dates swaps are uh, transacted between the international business banks or between the governments the foreign exchange market is global network of banks brokers and foreign exchange dealers connected with electronic communication system If core exchange this foreign exchange rates quoted in different markets were not essentially the same, there would be an opportunity for arbitrage. The process of buying a currency low and selling it high is called arbitrage. And the important thing they say that uh, U.S. dollar is considered as a uh, vehicle currency. Mean they they if the other currencies. Mean if uh, like we discussed the Swedish kron krona to uh, Swiss franc. If they want to Swedish krona to Swiss franc, might be it will happen. People the dealer will not accept the Swedish franc or something like. What they gonna do? What they have to do? First they have to convert into Swedish krona to the U.S. dollars. Then U.S. dollar to the Swiss franc, and that's how it will. It is is considered as the vehicle currency. Uh, that's for that's for, that's all for today and uh, thank you thank you for today allah hafiz